Hello there. Welcome to B1NN, the B1 news network on Hot Lava Music TV. I'm Cedric Blackman with breaking news. But before I start, please go subscribe to my YouTube channel, Cedric Blackman and Von Savage Media. Then make sure you visit jlava.com. Now let's join the live stream already in progress. Yeah, Josh, a lot of stuff is happening. Neighbors are now coming out and, and waking up in emotional upset, right? Because this is not the first time a shooting has happened on the street. So that being said, I'm going to show you guys what we're seeing right now. It's happening just um, before 3.30 this morning. There was a shot spotter alert call that came in. Police were dispatched to the area. They did find a deceased male individual um, and actually a lot of stuff has been developing since we got here this morning. It's been pretty active. So I'll just try to break it down for you. So initially, police um, were over on the left-hand side of the street. There's a yellow house there that they've been focusing their time on. And that is where we did see the coroner um, take the stretcher over. But then later in the morning, we were actually closer, up closer to the crime tape. We had police come up to us and tell us that for our safety, we needed to move back right now. So we moved back now. We're further away from the scene. But then after that, we did hear police yell, we found something. And that's when they went over to the right hand side of the street, that brick house there with the white. That is where they have been going in and out all morning, pretty much since that happened. They've been focusing on the porch area. At one point, they had rifles drawn. So I don't know if they thought somebody was inside the house. So that has been happening. So now they're focusing on two houses. We do only know, though, of one man deceased, do not know the age or the identity. But this is not the first time a shooting has happened here, as I mentioned. We had one just back in October, fatally shot a 16-year-old boy, was killed. There's still a memorial in front of that house right now. And actually, it looks like evidence was at the memorial because we did see police shining lights on it and kind of collecting things from that. So. Mm. Since then, within about the past 20 minutes or so, we've had a lot of neighbors coming up very upset, very angry, trying to find out what's happening, saying, you know, this just keeps happening over and over again. And so it's it's very sad to see and it's it's hard to see something like this, but it has been um, it's been a busy morning here, Josh. As one can imagine, uh, obviously, you've been there since the early hours since just before five o'clock, which changed because obviously, as you're saying, you just used the word seeing we're seeing people now as they wake up and they're on their porches and now mm -hmm. we're seeing police and now we're hearing some things too. What's what's happening right now? Does it look like there are family members there, maybe just neighbors at this point? Possibly from what we could hear, and again, this is this is from the distance. Um, we did hear right before we went live, we heard yelling and it sounded like on the opposite side of the crime tape, which would be, that would be California. Um, if you know that intersection there, it sounded like people were upset about the memorial being touched. Again, this is what we think we heard, but it sounded like they were yelling about the fact that police had been touching the memorial for the evidence that they had found there. So mm. emotions from the last shooting that happened in October, right? So this is this is a block where, you know, a lot of people, <laughs> they've seen a lot of stuff. And it's sad. We actually talked to one neighbor. He did not want to go on camera or anything, but uh, he basically said this happens almost every night. Like, this happens all the time. We talked and about, yeah. He's just mm -hmm. ahead, upset. Okay. Yeah, I mean, upset as, the, as they should be, right? This is where they live, and this just continues to happen. So... Um, it's it's definitely a lot of emotions, a lot of anger, um, and that's what we're seeing unfold this morning. Um, I know you, I, I mean, obviously, if you don't feel safe in any way, just let me know. And it's hard to feel safe in an area that uh, has had two shootings in less than a year, right? So I understand that, too. But but you've been out mm -hmm. there. We actually took you live in our 6.30 half hour on the morning show. And for people who do not see, you mentioned this just seconds ago. The police had their guns drawn at one point at a home have you has anything mm -hmm. else developed from that uh, from that standpoint have you heard anything yet so that seems to have de-escalated yes at one point we were actually pretty afraid i'm not going to lie to you it was a little scary because they told us to move back immediately and then that's when we saw them run to that house and we did see rifles out so they were looking uh, you know up at the windows and stuff like that so we didn't know if we were going to witness anything but then um about i want to say about 20 minutes later it kind of de-escalated and it seems like they got inside the house they we did not see guns anymore so whatever it was they they did not find you know something dangerous at least to have guns drawn still 
Okay, okay, and I appreciate you just giving us a little bit of clarity on that because it was just, as you mentioned, could be frightening for anyone there. Uh, we're looking at a map right now, uh, really quickly, mm -hmm. Melissa, so we're not on you at the moment. We're looking at a map of where this is for those um, who need the perspective. This is the northwest side of South Bend. This is California um, and Brookfield, so that's where this is all taking place, the 1,000 block, if you will. So that is the area that we're in. The one other thing I do want to mention about this, and Melissa, you mentioned it too, last year there was a shooting on this block where at least um, that's where the investigation was centered on this block as well you mentioned uh, just seconds ago about that memorial that's been set up there that memorial that was standing there we saw that and that was the first thing we saw at five o'clock when you went live on the air um, when we saw that we were we were somewhat mm -hmm. uh, shaken because we were like oh my goodness this is as i mentioned this weird eerie sense of deja vu for so many people um, in that area, in that community, but also mm -hmm. on that block too, which is uh, somewhat surreal. Have you reached out to anyone else um, involved in this in investigation? I know there are a lot of neighbors there that's probably looking out their windows right now. Yeah, yeah. So I've talked, you know, to a couple neighbors. Um, I've tried to reach out to other people mm -hmm. and Metro Homicide is currently investigating. So they're not able to give us more information right now, but they did confirm that they're interviewing witnesses right now and that one male has died. So we're hoping now that, you know, more people are waking up. Um, we're hoping we're going to be able to talk to more people about this. But uh, yeah, that's it's it's very sad, as you mentioned, and the memorial, now that the sun is, is up, we can see it clearly now, so. If you can, Melissa, take us through the steps of what took place for you. When you walked in this morning, you reached out to officials, and they sent you a, a pretty quick response, didn't they? Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, they did. I did reach out to um, Metro Homicide before I even got here, and um, they did respond like within just minutes and they confirmed that at about 430 they were now starting to interview witnesses. So they started doing that at 430 and then um, I asked again, you know, information about the shooting and all that they could confirm was that one male individual has died. So we do not know if there are any suspects right now. We don't know. Um, we don't know what's going on with the other house. Mm. We just know that they're still over there right now. And so whatever that house has to do with the one across the street, clearly something happened at that White House as well. So we're not sure exactly what that is. We're hoping to learn that soon. Yeah, what's eerie about all this, too, you had the memorial that's there. You see in school buses on Lincoln Way in the distance. You see in these front yards uh, some of the graduates would mm -hmm. appear. These are graduates or athletes or student athletes, potentially. You see the signs out there. So obviously this community, it, it seems like there are a lot of teens, if not just general children in this um, block um, that have to wake up to this as well. So, um, Melissa, if I missed anything, do you have anything else to add in this? I know you've been out there a while. I know I've been obviously looking and trying to text my sources on this thing. Anything else that I may have missed before I let you go? Because I know we, we may end up keeping these images up, uh, but I, I do want to make sure you continue to, to work your sources and find out what's happening here. Yeah, not that I can think of. Um, that's pretty much what we know right now. But as you've mentioned and I've mentioned, it's been very busy <laughs> this morning mm -hmm. here. A lot has been happening. And uh, I, I would imagine this is going to be closed. For, this street portion of the street will be closed for some time. OK, uh, Melissa, I appreciate it. I'm going to keep this image up. So if Jay can hear me, I'll keep this up for a few more minutes. I'll let you do your thing, Melissa. I know you um, could be potentially expecting a press release or even some calls over the next several uh, minutes, if not hours. So I appreciate that. Um, thank you guys. And we're, we're gonna keep these images up. For those of you just joining on Facebook Live, uh, County, County Metro Homicide, they've been out there now for about two and a half, eh, just over three hours. Um, and they've been investigating what we first were told uh, was an um, investigation involving Metro Homicide. And then we learned there was a male um, who was, um, who has passed away from the shooting. That's all we know. We don't have an age. We don't have a name. That person has yet to be identified. Um, so we're still awaiting all of that information as soon as we get it. In fact, I'm over here looking at my emails. Um, I will make sure, I will continue to make sure um, that you all um, get that information. Um, as soon as I can get it, you'll get it, okay? I wanna mention also on my Facebook page, um, I actually got some information from a woman who says that um, one of the homes 
um, she knew because one of the homes her sister lives in and she also mentioned that that home was hit by one of the bullets. Not sure which home that is on this block. As you can see, this is a pretty big crime scene spanning about half a block, but they've been pushed away. Even though the tape is, you can see the area that's cordoned off there. Uh, officials have pushed away the media saying that it is for their safety. They did that just prior to 630 because at around 630 we started to see some activity and some movement on the scene. That's when we realized we needed to go back live to Melissa and that's when she told us police had some um, weapons drawn. Um, and that was all we knew at that point. We don't know what that meant. We don't know if they are um, looking at these houses in relation to this specific shooting or if there was something said by a neighbor. We just don't know. We don't have that information right now, but hopefully that's something we learn um, over the next several hours in an email or whether it's a press release or um, in our 150 minutes of news, we're going to have a reporter on this story as well. Um, a lot of people are wondering where are we right now in terms of this violence? Let's not forget just a few months ago, it was around March, April, May. We had a huge chunk of shootings. We obviously every weekend, it seems like in the city, there is a shots spotter. There's a shots fired call. There are, I think one weekend, there were hundreds of rounds on the Northwest side alone. Uh, police and multiple sources telling me that we then confirmed that information with police. So that gives you an idea that there is, a, it's been an active spring. Music Church, preach, tabernacle. It's the only way we're going to get any action. Man, I want to give a shout out to two BBFs. Friends, you dig? Hey, they had a special shout out, you know what I mean? I mean, somebody care about y'all, man. Want to give y'all congratulations to Jay Lava and T. Von Savage on their success on keeping it P on their podcast where they take news situations and everyday occurrence and tell how it is and not like it was, you did. They be keeping it on the P for real. Y'all tune in to their podcast here. Yeah? I'm telling T-Von Savage and Jay Lava, hey man, Vicky think a lot about y'all, man. Y'all just keep doing your thing, man. Keep making it happen, man. Y'all super live, man. Y'all keep it on the P, man. I just want to send out a family congratulations from all the famous players around the world to Jay Lava and T. Von Savage on y'all success, man. Keep it P, man. From the P mouth to itself, the Bishop Don Matthew Guan, chairman of the board of famous players everywhere. You dig? Music TV. 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 TV